What's up YouTube? Motoblade here today. I am going to give you the review that you have all been waiting for. The brand new Indian Chief Dark Horse. Alright guys, let's get this video off and rolling. Starting with the power plant, the Indian Chief Dark Horse is powered by a 111 cubic inch, which is roughly 1811 cc Thunderstroke engine. With a 120 foot-pounds of torque, this baby is a beast. The final drive to the rear wheel is a belt. The exhaust is split with dual pipes in the rear. It is an air-cooled V-twin engine. You can get a oil cooler as an additional accessory to mount to the front of the engine if you so choose to, if you want some extra cooling. But that is the base engine. You can get a 116 conversion kit for this engine as well from Indian. They will they make the kit and they install it. And uh, if you want more power than 120 foot pounds of torque, I'm not sure why you do, but if you want it, more power, you can get that engine. It is available. What feeds the engine is my five and a half gallon tank. This baby runs on 93 dead dinosaurs. So a high octane engine, very low revving. Uh, my idle is around 800 and my peak torque is at about 3,000 RPM. Let's talk about handling. Handling on this bike is fantastic. For those of you who have been with my channel for a long time, you know I had the Kawasaki Vulcan S and the lean angle on that thing was insane. It was close to a uh, sport bike. This bike is much bigger. It's a cruiser style, so we're not looking for sport bike lean angles here. But I have run this thing on Tail of the Dragon five times now, Cherahala three times, and it has handled every turn and curve like a champ. I have only scraped my footboards one time, and that was because I was turning and I hit a bump, and so the suspension allowed me to go down. And so it was a combination of steep turn plus suspension dropping me down a bit, uh, hitting the bump that allowed me to scrape my footboard. Outside of that, no problems. The engine braking is as smooth as the beautiful matte black finish on the tank. It is a wonderful, wonderful engine braking feeling. Uh, very smooth, very quick, but it doesn't jerk you. Throttle response is good across all ranges. First gear might be a hair touchy, but nothing that I would complain about or have any problem with whatsoever. Uh, continuing on with our handling uh, specs, the front suspension has a travel of 4.7 inches and the rear suspension of 3.9, I believe. Might be 3.7, but I believe it's 3.9. This bike has a weight of 777 pounds, triple seven, when it's wet and ready to roll. For me, with the accessories on here of the windshield and the saddlebags, I come in basically at 800 pounds ready to ride. This bike, while being heavy and a beast, is very easy and nimble to throw around. The handling is just superb. So great handling, great engine. Up next we are going to talk about comfort. You have footboards on this bike as standard. You could get yourself a nice set of highway pegs and some highway bars if you want to stretch out a bit. I also have a added heel shifter for extra comfort in my shifting. The seat is all day comfort. It is wide, the padding is thick and plush, and the seat rises up my back a couple of inches providing a nice lower back support to help you uh, maintain long riding day comfort. Again, comparing back to my Vulcan S, I know they're in kind of a separate league, but that seat I would have to get off every half hour just because I was in pain. Uh, my longest ride on the Dark Horse so far has been an eight and a half hour day, about 400 miles. 
I had very few breaks, maybe three breaks total throughout the day on that. So I was on the bike for hours at a time. And after a while, I would need to get off and stretch, but I was comfortable to ride the whole day. I wasn't sore at all the day after, and I felt like I could have kept riding even more that day. So the comfort of this bike is great. Uh, the handlebars come back uh, to right where my arms fall naturally. That may be different for others, but for me, the handlebars fit me very nicely, in a, and it keeps me in a very upright and relaxed, comfortable riding position. Now let's talk a little bit about style. The Chief Dark Horse, like its name implies, and as you can obviously see, it is a blacked out look. Uh, you can get blacked out accents as well. My bike has the chrome trim and accents, and they are very small and very subtle and in various locations on the bike so as not to be overwhelming or gaudy, and I believe that they look very, very nice. My pipes are chrome. You can get them blacked out. If I had ordered this new, uh, I may have gone with the blacked out pipes, but I think the chrome looks good. And unlike other um, cruiser companies in America that make you pay a lot of extra money for clutch cover, engine cover, and lots of little accent and trim pieces to make your bike look good, I'm not going to name any names here, <clears throat> the Indian comes with all those things standard. I even have great looking little bar ends that are a silver color with the Indian logo in, engraved into them. And the engine cover has the big Indian logo engraved into it, and it all just looks very, very nice. It's a very classy looking bike. From the 50s style fenders in the front to the completely blacked out and metal covered um, body in the rear, the full fender look is just awesome. The lights also match the bike very well and don't detract from the styling, which is kind of, you know, a common theme among bikes where you have to have these big gaudy blinkers and, and lights to meet DOT standards, which we get, but Indian has done a very good job at making them fit this bike nicely. The turn indicators and the brake light are LED, so they are very bright for people to see you at night or in the daytime. And I think that the rear tail light just looks great on this bike the way it, it rides up the rear fender. Speaking of fenders, the front fender on this bike has a Indian head that lights up with a white LED inside of it when you turn the bike on and it stays on as like a running light while you're riding and it's just, it looks very cool. So if you guys haven't seen that, be sure to look at some pictures of that and check that out. The last thing I would mention on styling is if you do get a windshield for this bike, I prefer this tinted windshield. It really matches the blacked out look of the bike and it just kind of keeps that blacked out look the whole way through. And I think it makes the bike look a little richer and not like a cheap, clear plexiglass in front of you. I, I just like the, uh, the tinted windshield a lot more. Now let's talk about electronics and creature comforts and things that this bike has that just add to the entire package. And we are going to start that off with our gauge. As you can see, large analog speedometer with a small digital display window. On the left side of the digital display window, you have gear indicator that is always there no matter what uh, information on your display you cycle through. At the top of the display, you also have a bar that indicates your fuel uh, level, so you have a nice digital fuel gauge as well. At the bottom of the display, you see a clock and a little icon on the left, which we will get to in a minute, which is one of my favorite features of the bike. Over on the left handlebar control area, on the back side of the control where my index finger would naturally fall is a button which I can click to cycle through my digital gauge. And that cycles through RPM, ambient air temperature, battery level, how many miles per gallon I am currently getting, which I am currently up to 42.3, and as this bike breaks in a little bit further, that will continue to climb until I hit about uh, 3,500 miles. My current range 
which is 162 miles, so you have range in addition to your fuel gauge. Odometer, 2,600 miles on here as of right now. Well, almost 2,700. Trip A, Trip B, and that is actually my mileage since I brought her home from the dealership, which is 1,870, basically. And then we're back to RPM. Now, this bike does have dual 300 millimeter floating disc brakes on the front and a 300 millimeter floating disc brake single in the rear. Anti-lock brake system all around. And that is a standard feature on this bike. ABS is standard. Another feature that I'd like to point out is cruise control. And that's this little icon down here to the left of the clock, letting me know that my cruise is on and I can set it whenever I want to. Over on the right handlebar control area, you have uh, your cruise control button to push on and off if you want to completely turn the system on or deactivate it. And then you have set and decelerate and resume and accelerate. This bike also features auto-canceling turn signals, which is a great little feature that I like a lot. The high beams on this bike are more piercing than on my SUV. They are great. The stock headlight from the factory is fantastic. I have no plans to upgrade that in any way, shape, or form. Another cool feature, the features just keep rolling on this bike, they really do. Another cool one is a tire pressure monitoring system. So I've got a little indicator right here on my gauge. If my tire pressure gets low, it will come on and let me know. Not an excuse for not checking your tire pressure regularly, but it is still a nice feature to have. Lastly, one of my favorite features of this motorcycle is kind of a new thing that is coming to a lot of bikes recently, a lot of cruiser style bikes especially, and that is a keyless system. I simply have a fob that I have in my pocket and I walk up to the bike and you have to be within an immediate proximity of the bike to allow it to start. Otherwise, if you try to turn the bike on, you'll get battery power, but you won't get ignition, and it will come up with a lock icon on the digital display saying the bike is locked, unless that fob is within range. Now, a caveat to that is, let's say you forgot the fob at home. Or let's say maybe you just didn't want to bring the fob, which Indian only gives you one fob. I'm, I think that's kind of an oversight on their part. I would like to have a spare, but that's just me. Um, but if the bike is locked or you don't have the fob, you can enter a blind code. And I'm not going to tell you guys how to enter the code for safety reasons of all those who own an Indian or a dark horse with this feature. But it would be difficult to guess the code anyway. You, as the owner, get a code from the factory, but then you can change that to whatever you want. And then from then on, that is your code. Um, and a factory code won't work. So for security reasons, you change that to whatever you want, and then you better remember it. But you enter it blindly using a certain set of controls on the motorcycle. And it doesn't indicate on here, you know, the password or the code, nothing comes up. But that lock icon, when you enter the code correctly, will go away. And then you can start the bike. So if you don't want to bring the fob with you, or you forget it, or you lose it, you can still ride your motorcycle. Which is great, especially moving from a key system where, you know, if you forgot the key, you were screwed. So this is great. My overall impressions of this motorcycle. I only put about 2,500 miles total on my Vulcan S in the six months that I owned it. Seven months, actually. In the one month I have owned this motorcycle, I have almost put 2,000 on it. This motorcycle is comfortable. It is a joy to ride. I am looking for every single excuse I can possibly have to ride it. If you guys haven't checked out the Indian Chief Dark Horse, or even Indian motorcycles for that matter, you have done yourself a huge disservice to your motorcycle prospects. You need to look into Indian motorcycles. The quality and the amazing features have just drastically improved in recent years, and they are no longer the Indian motorcycle of old. They are a new, lean, mean machine. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun 
going over all the features and thinking of what to talk to you guys about for making this video. If you still have any questions, please, please, please do not hesitate to ask me. Comment down below. Talk to me. I try to respond to everybody who comments on my videos, and I will do my best to get you the answer. If I don't know it, I will find it out. And if you guys like the video, please hit that thumbs up button. That feeds my ego, and I really appreciate it. Most importantly, hit the big red button that says subscribe. I am trying to grow the channel and this community, and you guys have been awesome. Thank you for those of you who have subscribed already, and thank you to all the new subscribers uh, that are yet to come. I appreciate you guys helping me build this channel a lot. Right now, I am on my way to bike night at Seniza in Ottawa with the local Indian group and it's going to be a lot of fun a lot of good food a lot of good times so I'm gonna sign off here y'all so until next time everybody please 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 be careful out there ride safe ride on and you know I will catch you all later deuces